Welcome to this week's GCN Tech Clinic. And as always, we answer the questions that you guys have been submitting using the hashtag AskGCNTech. So let's dive straight into our first one, which comes from Insanic Mironic, who asks, how much cycling is too much? I'm 40 years old and I'm an amateur cyclist and cycle every day outside, around 40 kilometers after work and 60 to 70 kilometers both days of the weekends as a way of exercising and a stress reliever. People around me say it's too much. Is it? No, it's not too much, I don't think. Providing you're enjoying your cycling and you're using it as a stress reliever, then ride as much as you like. Sure, if it's maybe taken over your life a little bit, maybe dial it back a step, but basically ride as much or as little as you're happy doing, and it sounds like you're pretty happy riding quite a lot, so good on you, fair play. Next question is from Ward Figgy, who asks, if I move my saddlebag contents into my jersey, how much, how much does transferring that weight from the bike to my body equate to in overall weight savings or performance output? I'm assuming it's not one-to-one. It's -one. Um, so quite a simple question. Take your stuff out of your saddlebag, put it in your jersey pocket. It's not really gonna make a difference if I'm honest. The weight saving? I mean, you're going to save the weight of your saddlebag because you won't have that on your bike, but that's going to have pretty much zero impact on your riding. Um, and if you're happy with your stuff in your jersey pockets, put it in your jersey pockets. If you don't want it in your pockets, leave it in your saddlebag. If I'm honest, it'll have very little impact on anything to do with aerodynamics or your overall riding performance. Next question from Paul Chua. He says this one's for Ollie, but unfortunately I've picked it up this week. And he asks, what's the most aero position to mount your lights, especially to avoid getting dropped when racing on a time trial bike? Um, so yeah, in the UK, having a rear light is now an official requirement for time trials. And the most aerodynamic position to put a rear light is in line with your seat post. And there's lots of rear lights that fit in line and don't create any additional frontal area for your bike. So that won't affect the aerodynamics. Also, quite a lot of people tuck them on the saddle rails right up by the back of your saddle and keeps it out of the way of the wind as well. In terms of a front light, it's all about just trying to limit the increased frontal area putting that on your bike. So try and fit it onto a component rather than above or below a component. So it's facing forwards and you've got nice clear visibility of that. Next question, Jody Malakin says, which is a better speed sensor? Well, which is better, a speed sensor or a GPS based speed sensor? Mm, I'm not sure that one's really better than the other. It depends what you want most from it. So uh, a speed sensor that you put onto your bike or your wheel is obviously going to be far more accurate providing that you've calibrated it correctly. So it is down to you calibrating it correctly relative to the size of the wheels and tires on your bike. But a GPS based speedo is very accurate too. Although now and again, you can get some slight dropouts in the speed, but for most people in most situations, just using the GPS-based speedometer is more than adequate enough. But one drawback from using a speed sensor is that if you're gonna use multiple bikes, you either need to buy multiple sensors or keep moving the sensor from bike to bike. Whereas if you're using a GPS-based speed sensor, then you just swap it across with your head unit, you don't have any additional parts to move. So take your pick, whichever you find easiest really, but they're both more than accurate enough for most people. Next in is from Chin Chin, Fang? I hope I haven't said that too badly. Hi GCN, I'm currently riding an entry level road bike with Shimano Claris group set. I'm looking to buy a power meter crank. Unfortunately, Claris doesn't come with a power crank. So is it possible to buy and install a 105 power crank? Yeah, I don't see why not. You should be able to use a left hand side um, only power crank, which should go onto your Claris chain set if it uses the Holotech 2 system. So that should be more than fine. Just make sure you buy the same length crank as what you've got on the other side. Or you could just buy a whole new 105 crank set, put that onto your bike and you've got a little bit of an upgrade as well then. And then if you're going to take that approach, you could get a left and a right sided power meter depending on what kind of power meter brand and style you're looking to go for. But take your pick, just upgrade the left hand side or buy a whole new 105 crank set and you've upgraded your bike a little bit and it all should work perfectly nicely. Our next question's from Aditha N, so who asks, is it okay to upgrade the wheel set on my first road bike? Absolutely yes. More than, more than perfect to up upgrade your wheel set on any bike. Especially if it's your first road bike, 
Many people don't tend to spend lots of money on their first ever road bike and the wheels on entry level bikes do tend to be one of the areas that you can certainly upgrade first and you'll get quite a performance gain from that, especially on sort of more entry level bikes. The wheel sets do tend to be just not as good as what some expensive bikes come with basically. So it's a good area to upgrade and it will improve your riding and make your bike feel nice and fast. Good question this one is from Save the Noob. I like the name as well. This did make me smile when I read this one out. It says, disc brakes keep ruining my life. Last week I had to get my rear caliper replaced because the previous owner tightened the pad so much that the screw has broken in multiple places. This cost 140 euros. Yesterday the front caliper was not running smoothly and I found out that one piston only goes out and isn't retracting so it's always rubbing against the brake rotor. What can I do to save my life? Please help me before I throw my bike off a cliff. Um, seems a bit dramatic if I'm honest. But it sounds like the one, the one problem you've got is that one of the pistons in your brake caliper is a little bit sticky and is not moving in and out and retracting correctly. Which is quite common and is a very simple fix. To do this you're going to have to just take the wheel out of your bike, take your brake pads out, make sure those are away and out of the way. Um, and then all you need to do is clean the caliper up nicely, make sure there's no contaminants, grit, grease and grime in there to so make it super clean. And then you need to pull the brake lever a little bit to make the pistons poke out. And then once they're out, clean all the way around the seals and put a little bit of oil or mineral brake, uh, mineral brake fluid, depending on what fluid um, is in your braking system. Put that on there, wipe it off, and then you can nice and easily push the pistons back into the caliper. And that should help lubricate them a little bit so they'll move in and out nice and freely. And if you're struggling with that, just take it to a bike shop and they'll be able to do it very easily for you. But there should be minimal cost involved with that. Next in, I think this is our final question, is from Tom Waith, who says, Recently I bought a new bike that has tubeless tyres. Any tips for maintaining the tubeless tyres? And how often should I change the rim tape and the sealant? Good work on tubeless tyres. I'm a big fan of tubeless tyres, I've got to say that. But in terms of maintaining them, You've got to just do your normal stuff that you would do with any normal bike. So check them over for cuts and damage periodically. There's no need to do anything drastically differently. In terms of the rim tape and the sealant, the rim tape, certainly once that's fitted on the wheel, there should be no reason to have to change that at all unless you end up damaging it for some bizarre reason when you're changing your tyre or, or anything like that. So the rim tape should be fine for almost the life of the wheel, basically. In terms of the sealant, that should be fine for quite a long time as well. Certainly, I would have said, at least a year. It depends on the sort of conditions that you're riding in, the humidity. Um, you know, very dry and humid countries will dry that sealant out a little bit. But nine times out of ten, you should be able to leave it in there and it'll keep you going easily for a year. I, it's certainly not an aspect that I look at on my bike and think, right, I better take the tyres off and change the sealant. Nine times out of ten, I end up destroying a tyre before I need to change the sealant. So, yeah. I won't worry too much and I think it'll be perfectly fine to just leave until you end up having a puncture. Nice little bonus question for the tech clinic this week and it's a question for you guys at home and you can answer this down in the comment section below. And the question I've got for you, a cowboy rode into town on Friday, he stayed in town for three days and then he rode back out on Friday. How is that possible? Let me know down in the comments section and um, I look forward to trying to find those next week. Um, that rounds off the tech clinic. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and keep your questions coming in using the hashtag AskGCNTech. I guess we'll see you next week. Cheers.